It's Call Man Cocktails. I'm your host, Derek Schomer, Ian Andrews. We're going to be trying Uncle Bob's something. Root beer. What is this? Uncle Bob's root beer flavored whiskey. Somebody told us to, to get this, right? Is that what happened? Uh, yeah, it was a, I can't yeah, remember right. who, but it was a request from a viewer. A viewer request. And then Ian they, went out and dug up the research. Yeah, and the company was very accommodating. They sent us a bottle. So. And See, then, people, if you tweet Ian, he gets it done. Yeah, I have a backlog of about. 15 or 20 that I haven't been able to track down yet, but hey, you but never know. I'm going for the low-hanging fruit. We get a lot of requests. The ones that respond right away, <laughs> they obviously yeah, get preference. Right. <laughs> yeah, preferential treatment to companies that actually return emails. Yes. Fair point. Mm, so, legend has it, Uncle Bob grew up in the 1920s in New Hampshire coast. Have you seen Uncle Bob? <laughs> I don't get that part. I don't know. So... This is, did we mention what it's called, why it's here, what, it, what, oh. what Uncle Bob is? Uncle Bob's root beer flavored whiskey. It's uh, 35% alcohol. It's a caramel colored uh, root beer flavored whiskey. Okay. So they add caramel color to get the root beer look to it. Probably. Otherwise, you're going to have to age that in barrels for so long that it, it would probably be taste gross. Aged. I don't know. I'm sure it's aged. No, I guess I don't know that for a fact. Because you don't have to age the whiskey if you're going to flavor it. Ooh. It could be a base, like a vodka, it would be for like a jalapenos. Boom. You've got yourself spicy vodka. True. This, now you get Rudy, 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 uh, whiskey. Mm. Ooh, smells like root beer barrel. It's, yeah, it tastes like root beer barrel. Like the root beer barrel candies. It's, yeah. It's sweet and it's mm. tasty. <laughs> and it tastes like a root beer barrel. <laughs> With some but, kick. Yeah, that's the thing is, right when I taste it, the first thing I want to do is swallow it. Like mm. sugar. I know, right? And then when you do that, <laughs> it snaps your neck back like you just got punched in the dick. Oh, right in the nose. I don't know why that would make your neck snap back since it would go forward. My dick go bust your balls. Um, it does have a pretty good, uh, a wild blast of the face for the for 35%. It does. Like you... This is like a... Like you can easily hidden that behind an absolute abundance of sugar. I could see it in the fireball category of flavored whiskeys where it gets really popular because it's a great flavor. Yeah. And people shoot it and stuff, and like maybe there's a Uncle Bob would have to market the crap out of it to, to do that. Uncle right? Bob would. Uh, I, I get the feeling that Uncle Bob is going to be one of those companies that does, though. You think? Yeah. Forty Nine Distilling and in, in Whiskey House. I mean, th there's nothing to say they couldn't because I mean yeah. it would cost a fortune, I would think, but they could. You could this this could totally be a trendy shooter. Exactly. Yeah. At any, I mean, and, it's got the name going for it. And like, looking at the website, the I want to get some Uncle. Okay, I get a shot, of Uncle Bob. The marketing material and everything seems like it's geared like towards a, a hipster marketing type thing. You know what I mean? Do got I have guys beard. with beards and yeah, like, yeah. Oh yeah, well, right here. No, the they got the mustache thing. Got, yeah, that right there screams hipster, like craft hipster. That's the, that's it. It reminds me yeah. of, of like a bitters company or the dude from uh, Bitter Dude. Yeah, big old beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big old he yeah. yeah, he's got the hip. He's got everything going for him that's hipster except for the dress. Not like dress, like woman's dress, but like mm. the clothing. I think he just wears like regular clothes or ties and shit. Doesn't get he all. Does. Doesn't get hipster. What are you talking about, uh, the big dude? Or are you talking uh, about? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I can't remember. I was gonna say Kevin, but for some that's reason, not, it. not the, That's not the name. I was Nick. thinking of the other guy who was blending or was uh, food processing. Oh yeah, they're, yeah. they're, they're they've couple, gotta be hipsters. That's there's, their, there's a couple of hipsters in that. Uh, I think they dress to be hipsters as part of their. Thing. Well, I think hipster, hipstering and bartending seem to go together a yeah. lot of times. Like, a lot of a lot of quality bartenders are hipsterish, mm -hmm. and they have to be, I think, because you, wanna, you right. want to. You're, you're trying to go for that. You want your bartenders to be trendy and ahead of the trends, right? And to make you great drinks that you don't see coming, like uh, Uncle Bob's shots. Like Uncle Bob shots. No, if you're a bartender, that rolls off the tongue. Three Uncle Bob shots, please. Yeah, if you're a bartender, shots of Bob. Th think about yeah. this. Go to, uh, you don't have to be in like the most wild, like downtown city of New York, but no. like if you're in a Nashua. small, even, yeah, Nashville. I mean, if you can get a place where there's either a college crowd or totally. people who like to do that type of stuff, like Fireball, if somebody ordered, first the thing you should do is like, yeah, I'll get a Fireball graduated. shot. First thing you do is you go, and they've got like five or six buddies with them, like, just try try a shot of this, tell me what you think. Yeah. And if they're like, that's awesome, then you have the rest Let of them. Let me get buy. around. Yeah. Right. And that, and that. And then, you well, know, the bar, bar, everyone's going to see market, this. Yeah. Right, and they're going to be like, hey, where do I it's get that? It's an easily recognizable bottle. So I think yeah. they did a really good job on the bottle design because you're going to see that a mile away. Right, and it's not, if they didn't go for the professional look, they're not trying to say, no. this is this is all, Although the know, bottle is like a nice bottle. It's not a nice, huge, thick yeah. bottom. I mean, it, it's a standard whiskey it's bottle. It's a standard whiskey bottle, yeah. But it has, 
hipster-like quality to it. It's, it does. The, the applicability of this is going to be limited to, in my personal opinion, and where I would put this in a cocktail. Because root beer is yeah. hard to diff, deal with in a cocktail. But I'm sure there are some great cocktails you can make with this. Yeah. It's just not as versatile a product in the cocktail world as you're like gonna some get. Whatever you're going to get is going to have root beer flavor. Like, it's going to be wild root beer it, spice. Unless you can do sassarilla. something with, like, uh, you know, how, like, uh, the zombie or whatever yeah. that has Pernod in it. It's got very little Pernod, but it comes out just Use it as a nuanced really, product? Yes. That would probably, I mean, it's it's basically a liqueur. It's basically an herbal liqueur. Right, which is what that is. Yeah. So you would have to, if you wanted to make it, and when I say I think it's limited applicability, I'm thinking from my own perspective. Now, yeah. if I was to take the time or if a, a big bartender wanted to, or a mixologist wanted to be able to build something, no doubt that they could take and build a balanced, really like <coughs> trendy, awesome cocktail with this. Maybe Absolutely. it's like a, tw a twist on a Long Island iced tea. Maybe, Maybe it's got um, cream in it. It's like a root beer float. Could be that. It could be cream-based cocktails. I can totally see that. I've never seen a real trendy cream-based cocktail. White Russian, I'm wrong. Um, yes, you are wrong. That is as trendy as I think yeah. they get, but <laughs> other than that, I mean, maybe that's it. It's a white Russian with with this, you know, yeah. instead of vodka or with some some level of it's vodka. a white hillbilly. I just invent that. It's invented. Somebody else has to come up with the ratios, but somebody has to invent the white. You know what? If you've submitted our 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 thing, what is that thing? Our poll, our survey, survey? and Ian blasted out a whole email this. Today. Oh, I don't know when this, this goes afternoon. out, but uh, oh. whenever this video goes out, you the should... The afternoon of the 17th, <laughs> right. I believe. You should... Um, 18th, sorry. The 18th. You should submit the White Hill Billy, and we'll have to make it. We'll make it. Specify Uncle Bob's root beer. That'd this be could great. be real bad, but... Hey, if you could have get 20 of them. That's okay, because we only have to make it once. So we yeah, we'll just one. find the best one? Yeah. yeah. All right. It's all going to be different, so... Yeah. And you could just tribute to everybody that sent it in. <laughs> Yeah. And then we have 19 people saying, that's not my recipe. <laughs> yeah, that's just true. Close this enough. is a selected recipe from so-and-so. Thank you, the other so-and-sos, for your recipe submissions, but we didn't use yours, so-and-sos. So-and-sos. They were all too Do you want a question there. today? Yeah, I do. Dwarves or gnomes? Dwarves. Dwarves or gnomes? I was always a dwarf and fighter. Is this a World of Warcraft reference? Anything. Or, I mean, there's no, uh, I don't know. Fantasy, I'm guessing, huh? in general. Real cute and little. Yeah. I, I would say dwarves because they're. Did you say dwarves? Yeah. yeah, he oh, yeah. Did. What's the difference between a dwarf and a dwarf? A, dwarf uh, a gnome typically is some sort of rogue, thief, sneaky type person, Saudi or, or like magic like user, caster. Or they hang out in is, gardens. Right. <laughs> yeah. A dwarf is typically either a powerhouse warrior, or a cleric, yeah, or something. Or they work with stone and metal in their right. battle houses. Their powerhouses of battle. Right. Sometimes they live in the hills. So. Yeah. It could be a hill dwarf. Yeah. Mountains. She's like, Mountains I, do happen. You, we should invite her over to play some Dungeons and Dragons. I know. <laughs> fantasy football. Yep. I said I what? To do with it. Well, I said How it's like I fantasy said fantasy football is Dungeons and Dragons for sports geeks. Oh yeah, true. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yes. Except for I can't do any damage. Uh, yes. I don't understand. I don't do any of it. D and D, you have a character and you get to evolve yeah. your character. Anyway, I don't have any dice around. Right. Uh, William does upstairs. Does he? So we got the, what was that question? That dwarfs and gnomes. That's that's not nearly. That's not nearly as good as this one. Would you rather have a vagina on your forehead or a row of penises down your back like a stegosaurus? <laughs> <laughs> row of penises. That's just a back yeah, full pleasure. Yeah, you can cover you can, it up. You can cover it up. You cover it up. What if what if you're really excited though? What happens? <laughs> you look like a stegosaurus. <laughs> you look yeah. very and intimidating. And people are like, whoa, cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can get messy. Plus, I wouldn't want a vagina on my forehead because I'd always be picking at it. <laughs> well, you do. You... That sounds so gross. <laughs> Hence, he wouldn't want to do it. Exactly. I'm just looking out for everybody else. You can just put like a like a specialty shirt on there with like little slots yeah. for each for penis. Holes. So that it comes up like a stegosaurus like thing. <laughs> like so they're actually sticking out? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That'd be pretty they cool. Bounce like, like you're a puppet on like a, yeah, like it'd be like a puppet. Yeah, oh, think of all the cosplay stuff you could do with that. Yeah, that would be, yeah, be interesting. I'm a penisaurus. Yeah, until somebody starts yeah. playing with it and then it gets all messy. <laughs> oh, I want to touch it. No, no, no you don't. You're off limits. It's too many kids around. <laughs> too many. Oh. One or two is okay. Too many here. <laughs> I, I we got six. Just beyond the threshold. I didn't say one wasn't that. too many. for <laughs> <laughs> Uh, multiple you'd, times. You'd have to wear you'd have a, seven instances. You'd have to wear a burka. What do they call the things? A, a burka. The, the Muslim people wear? Yeah. yeah. If you had a vagina on your forehead. 
Oh, yeah. You, yeah. you have, to have to cover that or wear a hat all the time. Yeah. You wear especially hats with dildos on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> they never fall off. <laughs> inserted. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be perfect. It'd be safe. Yeah. Anyway, that was weird. All right. <laughs> We're done. We're finished on a drink. It smelled a little hot. It smelled sweet. It's very hot. It's definitely um, sweetness to it. It's, it's a high proof. It has it's really nice legs. 50, 50, what was it? 50% overall? Yeah. That's a pretty spite. That's, that's an intense little rye. It's got a great pop.